This is our last video in the mineral properties series. We're going to explore some of the structural qualities of minerals. Specifically, we're going to talk about habit, cleavage, and hardness. First, let's discuss crystal habit. This is a fancy way to say the way a mineral grows. Some minerals grow in cubic shapes like pyrite, shown here. It's such a cool mineral. Or halite, galena, and lots of others. Other minerals form long crystals with points, or they form sheets or octahedra. There are just a lot of crystal habits out there. Why is that? Well, remember back to the what is a mineral video. Minerals all have a defined chemistry, which means they're formed from the same chemicals that bond together in the same way every single time. For example, quartz, the most abundant mineral at the Earth's surface. It is always made up of a silicon tetrahedra, which is just one silicon atom surrounded by four oxygens, and they always bond in the same way to form a pyramid shape. Now, these silicon tetrahedra molecules can bond together like this, and form more complicated structures like that one over there. And all quartz crystals that form near the surface of the Earth grow into these shapes. Now let's take a look at another common example. Here we have halite, or you might know it as salt. This is what you put on your food to make it tasty. Minerals are just so cool, right? Okay, but back to habits. Halite is made of two chloride atoms, those sort of green spheres, and the three sodium ones, which are the purple ones. When these five atoms bond together, they always form a cute little cube shape. Put a bunch of those sodium chloride cubes together and they bond into a bigger cube. And the more sodium chloride cubes you have, the bigger the crystal. So at first you have a microscopic cube that then sticks together with other microscopic cubes and then more and more stick together and they get stuck until a really big crystal that is big enough to see forms. And guess what? When that crystal gets big enough to see, it's still a cube. That crystal never changes shape, no matter how many cubic molecules it has. So that's crystal habit. It's the basic shape of the mineral's molecule and also the shape of the larger crystal. And every crystal for every mineral has a specific hardness. What do I mean by this? Well, hardness is the measure of how durable a rock is. The chemistry of a mineral will determine the shape of the mineral, and that shape and the bonds between the molecules will determine how and where a rock will break under pressure. The way that we measure this is by seeing what minerals can scratch or abrade. If you want a fancier word, um, abrade, right? And the more minerals a specific mineral can abrade, the harder that mineral is. The more minerals that can abrade a specific mineral, then the softer that mineral is. We have a handy scale for hardness developed by a geologist by the name of Mo. The scale right here shows example minerals from softest, so um, talc at the bottom, to the hardest at the top, which is diamond, and it assigns them a number on the scale. Over the years, we geologists have found it super impractical to bring diamonds and corundum, which by the way is sapphire, ruby, or emerald, depending on the color variation, as well as all of these other minerals into the field, not to mention expensive. And we don't really have that kind of money laying around usually. So what we do is we use some other things, some other field tests. We know that a fingernail has about the hardness of 2.5, a penny has about 3.5, construction nail 4.5, and a pocket knife, which we always have, of course, is 5.5. Now to test the hardness of a mineral, you try to scratch that mineral with um, these different minerals that we know the hardness for, or field objects, or you can also buy really expensive, specially designed tools. Now, if that tool doesn't scratch your sample, then the sample is harder than the tool. If the tool does scratch the sample, then the sample is softer than the tool. So for example, if I am out in the field and I found sort of a whitish mineral that my fingernail can't scratch, but a penny does, then I'd say it has about a hardness of three. Okay, so now we know that minerals can get scratched and maybe even break. So what happens when that beautiful mineral habit of the mineral breaks? Well, then we say that that mineral has cleavage. It has been cleft, and all minerals have characteristic cleavage. Habit is the way that a mineral grows, and cleavage is our fancy way to say the way that it breaks. But both describe the shape of a mineral sample that you might see. You just have to determine if that mineral sample is broken or not. And for the most part, any sample you see in college is a smaller chunk of a bigger sample. So you'll be seeing the cleavage planes and not the actual crystal faces of the crystal habit, which is just something that you should, you should keep in mind for geology labs. 
Okay, so this is a graphic from your textbook that really nicely shows mineral cleavage. You can see an idealized sketch to the right of each mineral sample. Now before I go through the different kinds of cleavage, I just want to make one other note. Now crystal habit describes the mole or molecular shape of the bonds between chemicals in that mineral. Now cleavage, on the other hand, tells us where the weakest bonds are in that molecule. And that's because some chemical bonds are stronger and some are weaker. Okay, the weaker ones are gonna break first and more readily. So when a mineral breaks, it breaks along those bonds, which all line up into these planes. There can be one, two, three, or even sometimes four cleavage planes. First, we have one cleavage plane. The mineral biotite and the mineral muscovite have this kind of cleavage. Minerals with one plane of cleavage will peel because those planes are parallel to one another. Let's take a better view. Okay, so on the top, you can see some sheets of biotite. That chunk that the pocket knife is resting on is the bigger mineral. And the knife can easily slide between the more strongly bonded layers, cutting those weaker bonds and flaking off thinner and thinner sheets. Okay? All right, now let's talk two cleavage planes. Mineral with two cleavage planes form irregular sort of rectangular shapes. These cleavage planes can be at either 90 degrees to each other or not at 90 degrees, okay? The 90 degree rectangles tend to be a little bit more boxy and the not 90 degree rectangles are a bit more slanty. Do you see those two cleavage planes? There's one in yellow and one in blue. Now remember, these are 3D objects. So that yellow plane is both the top and bottom of that mineral sample and the blue one is both the left and the right sides. Adding, <coughs> oops. Yes, adding another cleavage plane gives us three planes, and this results in a mineral that looks cubic when it breaks. It is a cleavage plane on the top and bottom, the right and left side, and the front and back. Again, the angle between the planes can be either a square 90 or a slanty not 90 degrees. And last, four cleavage planes, which is not very common. And in fact, the only one you're likely to run into in this class is fluorite. This looks kind of like an eight-sided die or an octahedron, if you like. Okay, but not all minerals have weaker bonds. Okay, quartz, for example, is just silicon tetrahedra over and over and over again. And all of those bonds are of equal strength. So how does that break? Well, not particularly geometrically, it fractures. Any mineral that doesn't have cleavage planes is said to fracture. And that's it. Those are the mineral properties that determine the shape and strength of a mineral.